Okay, so what's all this lot then? Well, I've got um, obviously a keyboard here. Um, I've got some kind of Arduino-y kind of stuff here. And I've got my five volt power supply over there. And if I type on my keyboard, um, H E L L O. Uh, whatever I type appears on this tiny little screen down here. Mm, well, that didn't go so well. Let's have a closer look. Mm. So what I've done is I've put the um, this little contraption up on top of the keyboard so you can see it a little bit better. So here's my, this is a 0.96 inch OLED screen, I think. Let's type 0.96. Oh, where's inch going to be on this keyboard? No, that was an inch. Hmm. There. There, look, there you go. So it's where at is on my keyboard. So it's a 0.96 OLED screen. Hmm. And um, it's capable of displaying a few characters and they're pretty handy things. Um, it runs over I squared C um, protocol interface and it's connected up to this thing here. And this thing here, this little stack, is um, two things actually joined together, which I'll take apart and show you. Right, I've taken I've taken the keyboard away because that's quite annoying. So the keyboard is just a standard keyboard and it plugs in via USB socket as a USB plug as keyboards very often do and it plugs into here. And the point of this thing is to solve one of the three problems that I face quite often when making single board computers and sort of retro micro processor projects. Um, if you make a project like uh, this thing that I made about a year ago, which is my single board Z80 CPM computer, um, it's okay. It's one thing to make the, the computer itself, which has a Z80 here. For some reason, I've pulled it out and some memory, which I've pulled out and a few other bits and pieces. Um, but that the computer that you make can only sort of like beaver away working on something, but you can't see what's going on or interact with it in any way. So you've got three problems that you need to solve. Um, and those three prob problems are you need some input, you need some output, and you need some storage. So obviously you need to get data into the computer, and the most obvious way to do that is a keyboard. You need to get data out, um, so normally you'd have a screen, and you need to store your program or whatever you've typed into it. So you need some sort of like an SD card or a disk drive or something. So um, the input and output, the keyboard and the screen, are quite often solved by plugging the computer into your main PC, setting up a serial terminal and using um, the screen and the keyboard on your computer to interface with your um, with your um, computer that you've built. So, so we'd have this thing and we'd plug it into um, the PC via a serial port. But I was thinking, I just want to be able to type, put. I just want to be able to put a keyboard directly into it and type directly into it. Um, but the problem there, of course, is that on the end of a keyboard, you've got one of these USB. Uh, connectors most likely and there's nothing in the world of the Z80 that's going to speak USB language because the USB protocol is quite a complex thing it's got all sorts of different types of USB protocol and if you think what can you plug into USB you can plug pretty much anything into USB so the USB protocol has to be pretty complicated so that's where this fella comes in um, this is let's turn the power off uh, this is actually two things connected together. If I pull it out, let's get rid of that. It is, we can pull it apart. One of them is an Arduino Pro Mini, that's that one, uh, with a couple of wires that I've had to put on there for a reason that I'll get to in a second. And the other one is this thing, which is a USB host shield. And um, if you look this up on eBay, the eBay listing shows that they're pretty cheap things. They only cost a few quid and um, it's actually, I think, a bit of an antiquated device looking at the chip that's on there, which is a Max 3421, which is a USB, uh, it's a chip that understands USB protocol, but it only understands up to USB 2. And USB these days goes up to, up to 4 point something, so um, it's a bit of an old protocol. But it's good enough for keyboards and uh, mice and a few other bits and pieces like that. Um, HID, it's called Human Interface Devices, so it's good for the HID protocol over USB. 
Um, and really that you can think of this board as being a breakout board for a um, for that chip because it's pretty much all that's on it is a an oscillator. I think it's 12 megs or something in this um, this chip. And it's, it comes, when you first get it, it's got loads and loads of holes drilled all over it. And I couldn't really work out what was going on for a start when I got it. Because the eBay listing doesn't really tell you one really important fact. So it says things like it's compatible with Arduino and um, Arduino Uno. And it's compatible with Android, for some reason it says. Um, but the one key piece of information it doesn't tell you is the reason it's got 12 holes along there and 12 holes along there is you're supposed to solder headers into it and plug it into an Arduino Pro Mini. Now this is an Arduino Pro Mini, which I've soldered um, long uh, header pin connectors onto so that I can either put it down into um, a breadboard or I can plug wires into the top or whatever I want to plug into the top of it. And an Arduino Pro Mini is a pretty ancient old Arduino. It runs at 3.3 volts. It's a Mega 328, I think. Um, 8 megahertz 3.3 volts and it has no um, USB port on it anywhere so you need an FTDI programmer in order to be able to program it so this is my FTDI programmer uh, which says HW417 it's just a generic one that I got off eBay uh, you plug USB in here you plug the programmer into this socket that I soldered on the end of it and that's how you program your Arduino when you finish programming it you can take that out and um, use it. Uh, this program I've got set to 3.3 volts. It's got 5 or 3.3 volts setting. I've set it to 3.3 volts. It plugs in there, pr provides 3.3 volts to here. And this um, then plugs into the, uh, well, the, the USB host shield sits on top. And um, it can actually <laughs> sit on top both ways around. And I discovered if you put it that way, it doesn't work, but it doesn't blow up. But it's supposed to go around that way because um, what they don't tell you in the eBay listing is that all the pins along here and here exactly match with all the pins along here and here on the Arduino Pro Mini. The ground and the power supply and everything's in the VCC reset, etc. is all in exactly the same place. Yeah, so what can I tell you about this shield then? Well, um, yeah, I did get it working. It does definitely work. It does definitely allow you to connect up a keyboard and speak USB keyboard language. And I think it can also do a few other bits and pieces. You probably do a mouse as well quite easily. But it is a bit of a pain for a few reasons, which I'll now talk about. So firstly, obviously, the thing that you need an Arduino Pro Mini, um, it's, the thing is that it runs at 3.3 volts. And the Arduino Mini and some other microcontrollers run at 3.3 volts. But something like an Uno won't be running at 3.3 volts. So if you try and connect it up to an Arduino Uno, despite the fact that it says you can in the eBay listing, I would imagine it would blow it up. Because I looked up the data sheet on this chip, the MAX um, 3421, and it is a 3.3 volt chip. So you can't go connecting 5 volts to it. Um, now, it's got a few other problems on this board. One is... Uh, the lesser of the problems is that some of the pins are labelled incorrectly. It's just the silk screen is wrong. Um, I think it's a copy of, I don't think it's the real thing, I think it's a Chinese clone of some board that someone else has produced. Uh, it, but it, it has a much more fundamental problem than that because it's a 3.3 volt board. So it is only going to ever be able to provide 3.3 volts. It's got no um, voltage um, multiplier or anything on it. So it outputs 3.3 volts to USB, and USB runs on 5 volts, um, which seems like a complete, well, just like a failure for the whole thing, really. So what you have to do um, is cut this little tiny track here. I don't know if you can... So you have to cut a track. There's a track here. It's labelled, actually, on the back, it's labelled... V bus, there's an output labeled V bus or a hole labeled V bus. Um, you have to cut the track between V bus and VCC, uh, put a bodge wire from V bus to this pin here, which is the raw pin, uh, and then you have to power it five volts into the raw pin, uh, which then gets you five volts to the USB, and then the 3.3 uh, volt regulator on the Arduino Pro Mini provides the 3.3 volts to the rest of the circuit. 
So it seems like a complete and utter mess. And I just don't understand why it was built this way. It just seems completely wrong. Like I can't see how it could possibly work in the way it is when you buy it. Unless people know some little trick that I don't know. But anyway, once you've cut that track, made this little bodge wire connection, plugged it into there. Oh, and also you need to get at the um, two of the <laughs> slightly non-standard, I don't know why they're non-standard, but the A4 and A5 lines on your Arduino Pro Mini, which is why I've had to solder two wires, which is why I've had to solder two wires in there. Um, so it's a bit of a contrivance, but it does work. Um, I've got a white dot, so I don't ever make the mistake of plugging it in the wrong way around again. Um, and then you can do it. So you can pr put the FTDI in there, program it with the library for the host shield, which seems to work absolutely fine, although it's quite convoluted code, but I did manage to get it working. And any other sort of uh, stuff you want, like say, for example, one of these, uh, program that into there, take that off, plug in the keyboard, wherever that's gone. Uh, grab the keyboard, plug that in there, and voila. So I've got keyboard going in, it being interpreted, the Arduino is understanding it, and then from there I could either put it out in parallel, so the, the keys you type could come out in parallel, so I could put a, some sort of parallel um, port on my board, or, of course, serial, because the Arduino Pro Mini already knows how to communicate in serial. In fact, that's exactly how it's communicating with this board. So these pins here are serial pins. So I could do a serial connection to it. So I could put a, um, a serial interface on my uh, single board computer and speak in serial. And I would have a keyboard typing directly into my Z80 machine. That would be pretty good. 